Russian state propaganda has sent a clear signal to its soldiers that there is no point in complaining about the so-called meat assaults. The country's chief propagandist, Vladimir Solovyov, has called on Russian soldiers to die in silence. He made the scandalous statement on air on his resource, Soloviev, live. The propagandist demanded that Russian soldiers silently obey the orders of their butcher commanders even if they are sent to slaughter. It seems strange to me that during a war, such entries appear. I, such and such a soldier, am being sent to storm. Our commander is such and such, he is bad, and this is posted in the public domain. Can you imagine this during the Great Patriotic War? There is a war, a combat order is issued, and the person says, why are you giving me a combat order? What difference does it make to me what your combat mission is? I will not do this. My mother did not give birth to me so that I would go on assaults. But in general, there is sole command in the army. You like the order, you don't like it, and how valuable a specialist you are, Solovyov said. This is how he responded to a loud scandal that thundered in the Z community. We are talking about the liquidation in an assault of a group of well-known drone operators who have been fighting against Ukraine since 2014. In fact, they were executed by their own commander who sent them to certain death in a meat assault. Before their death, the occupiers recorded a farewell video accusing the commander of protecting the drug business and working for Washington. The Russian military continues to carry out large-scale infantry meat assaults despite the tactic incurring massive casualties. A meat assault refers to an attack when a large number of Russian military personnel swarm an enemy area with almost no cover. Since Russia invaded Ukraine in February 2022, Moscow's forces have engaged in high-risk frontal assaults to overwhelm Ukrainian positions. These human wave attacks are often carried out by reservists, former prisoners and poorly trained civilians sent to fortify the Russian front line. Pages which, according to the media, are used by members of the Hezbollah group are exploding en masse in Lebanon. According to preliminary data, the ambassador of Iran in Beirut, Mujtaba Amani, is among the hundreds of victims, reports build. It is noted that dozens of devices that Hezbollah fighters use to communicate with each other exploded at the same time in Lebanon today. Outwardly, such devices resemble pages. It is noted that, according to preliminary data, about 100 people were injured. Reports of casualties from the explosions are coming from the southern suburbs of the capital Beirut and from the south of the country. In Hezbollah, they connect what happened with the actions of the Israeli special services, which allegedly managed to infiltrate the ranks of the terrorist organization and install explosive devices in the pages. Official Israel does not comment on what is happening. Sources of TV Channel 12 in the Lebanese security forces said that the leadership of Hezbollah called on its fighters to temporarily not use the issued means of communication, the source writes. According to a source familiar with the situation who spoke to the Wall Street Journal, the exploding pages were from a new batch that Hezbollah received recently. A representative of the group revealed that hundreds of fighters possess such devices. He suggested that malware may have caused the overheating and explosions. Some members reported feeling the pages getting hot and disposed of them before they detonated. It remains unclear what triggered this series of explosions, but Lebanese authorities believe Israel is behind a cyber attack. The Lebanese Foreign Ministry characterized the blasts as a dangerous and deliberate Israeli escalation, claiming they were accompanied by Israeli threats to expand the war towards Lebanon on a large scale. In response, Israel has raised its alert level at all ports. Israeli security officials believe Hezbollah plans military action, prompting an urgent meeting of senior officers at the Defense Ministry to explore options for a possible northern escalation, noted the Israeli publication Haaretz. The Americans are not willing to see this conflict either, and the chances are that Israel and Hezbollah will continue their war of attrition along the border. But for Sarit Zehavi, the founder and president of ALMA, an independent research and education center specializing in Israel's security challenges, the most important thing is whether a full-fledged war happens or not that the threat of Hezbollah is handled properly. The capabilities of Hezbollah need to be dealt with. The people of Israel want to live in peace, and the people of Israel are not going anywhere. So, we will stay here 
and we will continue to live here, and we will do whatever it takes to live in peace and to continue to live here, she concluded.